So there's this point. Uh, there's this question, you know, from one of the audience: Is this project a redevelopment from an existing hotel to a service apartment? Is it true, and how sustainable it is? So okay. is it a redevelopment? Okay, this is a good question because actually to understand about this project, we first must know what is the original plan, right? So I will first start with a simple sharing about uh, where about this location and what you can see from the existing uh, land, okay? So let me just share my screen. Yep. All right, so for today, I have prepared a simple presentation deck here, which actually will show you uh, pretty much all you need to know for this property. But what I want to start off most importantly is for those people who are concerned, right? What is the current development in this area? So before I start, right, I just want to do a simple disclaimer is that uh, for all our contents is uh, actually for information information purpose only. Yeah. So actually it's important that you do your own analysis before making any investment decision. And for this presentation, it's not to advise to buy or what, but it's rather to give you some form of information and ideas, right? So talking about the site, right? Okay, so this is what you can see in the existing project where you have this uh, hotel. Okay, so this hotel is actually the existing hotel in the in the actual site. So what happened is that you know back to the question. Since this is a re uh, is this a redevelopment or is it a purely new development, right? So to answer that, a term is actually a repurposed project. So what does repurpose mean? So from what you can see on this uh, in the site here. Right, you can see Hock Chun and Victoria Station. For all people who know Ampang or Jalan Ampang, definitely you will recognize these two major hotspots, right? Hock Chun is a supermarket and Victoria Station is a you know a place for people to actually gather. Right. But most importantly, what I'm trying to emphasize here is that next to it is this used to be called the Lanson place, which is under the ambassador role for Telsuit, right? So if you pass by the Lampang, definitely will notice this iconic building. So what I want to mention here is that this atrium is actually a repurposed development whereby, okay, you can see the, the existing structure, they still maintain it, right? So we can see this uh, floor plan of the atrium, it looks very unique. In fact, we call it the atrium is because in the middle, you have this opening, right? So it looks very sort of uh, open you have a lot of sunlight a lot of ventilation so some people may ask when talking about repurpose what how does it different from you know redevelopment okay so to give you some form of idea so that whether you can decide is this the right project for you right you first must understand what does repurpose means or implies to the project itself okay so repurpose it simply means that Actually, this pro, uh, this building was used to be a hotel. Okay, so what the developer do, which under this case is Paramount Property, right? They have taken over the building. In fact, they have bought over. Okay, previously is under Wing Time, which is also a uh, you know they are in property development. So last time it was under Lanson Place where it used to be operate as a hotel, but because like in this project, right, we are trying to target you know people who are looking for luxury service apartment in the very prime area of Gala Ampang. So what they do is that they actually tore down the wall. Okay. By by wall I mean is the internal, right? So what happened is that they're gonna resize it from smaller hotel units to like bigger family size. Uh, so is it clear easy to understand so far? Right? Yes. So at least for okay. me I understand. Yeah, so to answer that question, right, is it a right project for you? So I would say, right, repurpose basically means the layout will be demolished to be optimized so that you can able to fit in more rooms, right? I think this is very important because I think people looking for a place to stay for long, right, definitely you want, uh, you know, working space, personal space, as well as space for your children or family, right? And secondly, yeah. because there won't be any extra floor to be added on to the building structure itself. So rest assured lah, for those who have, you know, concerns that if this building will able to sustain this new development, I can assure you is that because there's no existing floors. And in fact, last time, the material used for buildings are generally more solid. 
right? So rest assured, this project definitely won't have such issue of, you know, people saying cracking and all. In fact, I would take this as a bonus because when you do a repurpose, it's something like you, uh, you know, when you do a renovation to your house, right? Just imagine today, you know, your house, you have some wear and tear, right? So what happened is that they tore down, right? All the wiring, piping, and they're going to reinstall new ones, okay? And, and last but not least, because of this action, okay, they can able to pass down the cost savings for, you know, not having to rebuild or re, re, repower the, you know, the building itself. And these savings will actually count into the price, right? So I think this is a very interesting development because you won't get this anywhere else in KL where most projects normally they will start from piling. And that's the reason why I think if you are looking for an investment, you know, with a decent or cheap entry price at a prime location, I think this project is definitely one you can take note of, which later I will share you more, more of the points when I go through the questions, right? So we, we I saw some questions coming in, maybe later we will open a Q&A for that. Lah. But just to cap it off for my first answer, I just want to highlight a few main things he said. Uh, because of this repurpose, the existing building, they would add in some new elements. And one of it, right, and I think this one is most people are quite uh, focused on, right, the sky pool, okay? Yeah, so they're going to add in a sky pool at this building, which is an entirely new feature. So you can see the, the design, the concept is beautiful. Right? I hope I have the time to go through everything. But yeah, so I hope it answers the first question. Okay, Harris. Right. Just now, when you talk about repurpose, right, when whereby they are actually using back their same structure, so is it, you know, safe to say that this project is actually um below market value? I believe that this is what the audience has been waiting. So, is it like below market value? Well, this is something which I think we get a lot of question from. Uh, so to answer that, yes, it is, right. But but by how much? And whether does has room for it to appreciate, I will answer that later. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so I believe that Harris has actually prepared something at the end. Okay, so there's another question coming in, all right? Stated that with the current pandemic affecting job opportunities as well as the expatriates, what's the outlook for this project? Yeah, of course, when we talk about you know project like this in Jalan Ampang in the embassy role, right? Normally people their concern is that oh, normally this kind of rent, right, you normally rent to expatriates. So without the inflow of expatriates, all right, mm. what do you think, you know, about this project? What's the outlook of it? Okay, this is indeed a very interesting question because there will be a lot of people who question why developer launched, you know, this project at such timing, right, where, you know, we are talking about pandemic. So in fact, we do see that there's a lot of people that actually got laid off as well. So it, we can't deny the fact that expect market, I think uh, there will be slight percentage will be affected as well. So to answer that, right, I actually do a simple analysis to share to you guys, like how do we actually able to analyze this method? Okay, and I'm going to share a screen now. Okay, so to go back to the slide, right? So I have prepared a simple analysis of what is happening in the Malaysia market, especially in the expect market. I think this is an important question because we are buying in the middle of KL, right? And I think Jalan Ampang, everyone should know, it's called ambassador role for a reason. And because the high percentage of people staying here are expected, we, we do need to understand what is the future uh, trend and whether will there be more expect coming in or will there be more expect going out, right? So if you look back at the numbers, right? So in, in Malaysia, on average, or uh, in total, we have about 117,000 expatriate in Malaysia. So this number actually I gotten, I think was 2020 or 2019, right? So the latest number is yet to be reviewed, but you know, I will update as it is. But why I want to show you guys this is because if you look back in the past one year or two years, there has been a lot of question on, you know, whether Malaysia, the current situation, pandemic, poly political instability, Will it affect the confidence of you know expatriates coming to Malaysia? 
And to answer that, right, if you look back at the recent survey, uh, this is done by intern nations, which is, you know, they have more than 4 million database of expatriates across the world. And out of the 4 million, they have picked out 11,000 of uh, what we call the participants to basically answer a QA and a about staying in, you know, places across the world. And surprisingly, Malaysia was ranked number four. And this is generally what expats think of Malaysia, right, to those who are thinking of investment. So for aspects, why Malaysia are still ranked number four, and if I'm not mistaken, the top three, one is uh, Costa Rica, one is Taiwan, right? So it's a quite fascinating number, but I'm sure there's a reason. And one of the reasons why Malaysia is because number one is the medical care and affordability. And number two is because of the social life. And I think by that, what they mean is basically they can still get the food they want. They can still go out, you know, to meet their friends. And it's all about the community, right? So I think that is what attracts a lot of aspects to come to Malaysia, right? But there's also, you know, some of the reason why, you know, some aspect doesn't prefer. And generally, it's because of these two, right? One is safety and security. And one is political, insta uh, political stability. Of course, political pretty much we can't control because this is really you know, a macro factor. But what we can do is perhaps looking at safety and security. And for that, right, why I want to link back to this project is because if you look at the five top areas, right, where experts are looking into in Malaysia or in KL in general, okay, and this is a very interesting number, right? What we notice is that, okay, most of the aspects in, the, in KL now is staying in these five areas. And I'm sure that you have no out of these five, you know, one, one of it like at least, right? So KLCC is, I think, without doubt, the most hot, right? So it has the highest percentage. And then you have Damasara Heights, Bangsa, and Mount Kiara, and KDI. And because of that, right, just now when I mentioned that, you know, what is the factor that drives aspects to come in besides medical care, social life, safety is part of the reason why they choose these areas. And to answer that, right, I want to go in that further to show you some of the reasons that experts will choose your location rather than others. And these five factors, right, will also decide whether your demand of your property, whether is it from local or from experts. Who wants to know what are the factors, right? You can always give a like, just comment, right? I will share it to you guys. So, I think for those who are in the property market, you would know, right? Asset market, normally they need to consist five of these, right? High-end supermarket, asset community, international food, international school, and hospitals, right? So all these five is, I would say, the, the main or basic fundamental before you decide to put in money to buy the property. Because if you don't know the requirement of aspects, I can tell you, right, it's impossible to fetch a high rental price. Right, so to look at atrium and to understand does that fit the requirement, first we have to understand the area analysis. And today I actually will show you right what is happening within one kilometer from this project and why I believe this property will be definitely an aspect hotspot. Okay, right. So first of all, you can see that actually uh atrium is located in the middle of Jalan Ampang, uh at the cross section between Jalan Ampang Kile and Jalan Ampang. So what happening is that we are actually sandwiched or in between China and Russia embassy, which means to say you have already two tenants pool over there. But what I want to add on is that because just now we talked about the requirement of aspects is that you need good hospitals. And in this case, we have Glen Eagles. You need to have good supermarket. In this case, we have Link KL as well as the Hock Chun next to us. And third one, we also need like leisure lifestyle. So you have a Great Eastern Mall and you have a lot of uh, FMD, which later I will share to you. And of course, talking about school, right? We, we Within walking distance, we have two, which is Seifu and Ch Children's House. And if you want to talk about working opportunity, definitely here you have KLCC, which is 1.8 kilometers away. So we can see that actually it all fits the bill, right? And to add on on that, talking about security, because you are buying in the middle of the embassy, I can assure you is that normally in this areas right is highly guarded and gated and you can see most of the buildings here are low rise that's the reason why people like staying here and especially the experts are. okay 
Yeah, so to give you some samples of what is the walking distance amenities, you can see, right, all these are very important factors that will drive aspects in, right? Victoria Station, Kenny Hill, Bakers, all these are quite, you know, hot spot where locals are even going there, right? So school-wise, we have Safe Food, we have Beacon House. So all these are, I would say, part of the factors that will drive their decisions to settle here for long term, right? So, yeah, so that's to answer the second part. And I hope that it will give you some idea whether if this a right property if you are targeting for aspects community okay okay i think harris has really give given a very very detailed analysis of uh, what is expertise looking for and you know what are the expertise preference in malaysia all right so we do have actually a few questions on the table but we'll leave it until the end all right and we'll actually pick up three uh, lucky questions and you'll you'll get your questions answered right but there's one from ali jai he was asking that how to actually search at youtube for this project harris is there any you no know, youtube videos okay so far YouTube? we haven't yet uh we haven't yet post but you can be uh you know keep your highs hope up because we're gonna post soon but today this session is mainly to you know break down to you guys the few key concerns right so you can stay tuned to the end all right Okay, also there is, um, hello Moon, hello, there's one um, audience, LZ, all right, he's actually saying that near their office, which is KLCC. So I'm assuming that, you know, you're referring to the expert trips working around KLCC. Lah. All right, yes. now there's another question coming in. All right, and now let me show you guys this so the question is actually that what's the unique selling point that actually make this project different from others yes i think harris this is the far most important questions you know especially for uh condos nowadays right you can yes. see i would say eight out of ten they look almost the same right yep. so what is actually so special about this project other than being in you know jala ampang what, what, okay, what other things to answer that, I think this is generally the most concerned question because there's too many supply now in the KL market, right? So we are talking about TRS, Bukit Pintang, all these areas are upcoming with a lot of projects, even Malui or even, you know, Chan Saolin. So actually what separates this area from the others or this project from the others, we first must see the, of course, the, the you know, the fundamentals of the, uh, of the development. And for that, right, Again, I will go back to my slide because I want, I want to share something which I believe is very interesting. And maybe this from here, you can see something that you like. Okay. First of all, let me just go through a bit about the basics. Right. So this project is actually under Paramount. So for those who don't know Paramount, you can always search them online. They are actually quite well known in Malaysia. They have more than, I think, ongoing, there's more than six projects. One of it, uh, of course, is at the PJ uh, called the Adwater. But to elaborate more about this development, right? So what you can expect is that this is going to be a very, very, very low dense project. And by very, very, very low dense, I mean it's very, very, very low dense, right? But like how many projects out there you can see there's only one block with 241 units, right? Even there is, I'm sure that it's, you know, it's multiple blocks. Okay, over here, there's only one block. And what I like about this development is that because it's a freehold title, okay? So you can rest assured that all the new properties in KL, majority of them are actually leasehold, okay? And of course, this title is under commercial HDA. So uh, for, to answer those that, you know, are thinking, is it a commercial title? Uh, in fact, I would say it's under HDA. So your electricity bill can be follow the residential rate. And for your loan, you can go up to 90%. And to add on for those who are looking for HOC incentive, this is the one, okay? So for maintenance fee, Yes, it's 50 cents because this project is low density, but you can rest assured the 50 cents you pay is actually well worth it. Okay. And of course, last but not least, the furnishing, right? This is also one of the selling points where it actually comes with smart home. So later I will elaborate more what does that mean on smart home. So talking about unique selling point, right? We always talk about landmark. And for here, without fail, right? We also need to know where are the people are, you know, coming in from. So you can you can expect that people staying in actions most likely are people who are working class right people who are in the city making a living and for for that reason right, what i like about this property is because of the distance 
it's only less than three kilometers away. Um, I don't know whether do you realize three km is how far, but I can assure you today, right? If you drive out from your condo or from your house towards the highway, easily it's more than three kilometers, right? So basically, what I'm trying to say here is that if today I'm uh someone who are looking for luxury, convenience at an affordable price within KL. Do you think I would drive more than three kilometers or five kilometers away? Or will I go for a location which is less than three kilometers away? You see, that's a very big difference. Because in KL, right, you must understand that 80 to 90% of the buildings are located in the city center. And for that, you can notice most of them are generally focused around here. Either Jalan Tun Raza, Jalan Ampang, Bukit Bintang, right? So it turns it, it turns the area into a very high dense, very congested area. And what I like about this area is because you can see the surrounding here are very low density. And again, it all goes back to the fundamental, which is here is actually an uh, embassy area. So they actually have a certain restriction and certain requirement towards the plot ratio or what we call the development requirement. So that any buildings you view here is going to be very low density. And because of that, they are also surrounded by greenery. What I can foresee is that people staying here are most likely people who also like outdoor, right? They like to go exercise, like to go jogging. Because with this sort of backdrop behind your house, you can imagine the, 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 the air, the noise is going to be very, very, I would say, peaceful. Yeah. And of course, talking about unique selling point about the building, right? So we have moved the environment, we have known the surrounding. Now let's go back to the building itself. So what I like about this building is that it doesn't look like an old hotel, like what you see now. In fact, because they're going to repurpose it, they're going to make every unit what we call the floor to ceiling window. So you can see it's like a full glass building. And on the level 6 and 13, okay, you have the uh, garden. Sorry, there's a typo here. This is supposed to be a sky pool, not freehold. It's a sky pool <laughs> on level 20. Sorry about that. Yeah. So even the residence is, you know, is is twenty floor, right? So the basement car park will be at uh, lower ground floor. So each unit will come with one car park, and the bigger unit will come with two. And coming back to the view, right? This is something which I want to emphasize because when it comes to investment, we must first know what are the size available and what are the future market, right? So coming to here. You can see that in one floor, there's about 14 units where it will split into four facing. And if you are someone who are a KLCC lover, I think you cannot miss out is, uh, you know, this facing, like, which is rest. And for me, because I'm more like conservative, like, I, I'm not so much ambitious that my building must have a KLCC view. So I would rather go for, normally I would go for the Pukki Pabo view, which is the facing Gala Ampang or facing Ampang that side, which is, you can see the, you know, some existing building there. Of course, for those who like to, you know, like to see greenery, you can also choose south, which is facing the Royal Selangor Golf. I'm not sure if I have the time to show that, but if you have uh, interested, you can always press the WhatsApp link, like, which later I will post it, right? But what I'm trying to say here is that facing south here, because it's facing the existing condo set, okay, which is almost the same floor, and because that land also will be developed into a new project, so I can say that facing south, most likely it will be blocked in terms of the view. Yeah. So this is something you, you should take note of before you actually decide whether it, this property is right for you. And to add on, right, just now talking about unique selling point, it, it doesn't go away from the facility like, because facility is what determines uh, the difference between you and other projects. And for this pro particular property, right, I can tell you, because it's a highly catered guarded community, you know, like what you know, the embassy role. So right in the lobby, uh, right at the ground floor, you have the guard house, which actually looks like a hotel like, to me, right? Because you have that high roof, high roof, right? And, and when you go into the lobby, right, you have that, I think th this is more than double volume. It's like triple or proper volume. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what the words to put it, but that feeling immediately will comes in as you step in, right? So, I think it will let you feel like, you know, you are going to a hotel more than a resident. And this is one thing that I like. Okay, so you can see some of the facilities here, like, you know, the convenience store reading area, which is quite 
common uh, in condo nowadays. So for that, I, I, I would not want to elaborate more for here because there will be more interesting things coming. So you can see on the sixth floor, you have the yoga lounge, shoot out lounge, and all these are basically to bring in more air into the condo. Because like I said, this is the atrium. The design structure is such a way that in the middle, you have the hole and you have the sunlight coming in as well as also cross ventilation coming in from the front. That's why in the whole building, it, it will be very, very windy, like, very open, very windy. And last but not least, I think this is one thing which without fail, most of the clients when they come in to look for a project, right? This is their minimum requirement nowadays, which is a sky filter. And then I can tell you, not just only you, right? Even your tenants. And if let's say you want to rent out as a short-term Airbnb, right? If today your, your condo has a sky pool, I can tell you your visibility or your view rate of your building, right? It will be two to three times higher than a, a building without sky pool. And you can trust me on that. Yeah, and for that reason, actually why we actually build a sky pool, that's also to pull in a lot of tenants in, right? So you can imagine coming back home. It's totally relaxed, right? You have the sky KLCC view on the front, on the, you know, on one of the facing. At the back, you have the golf course facing. And you even have the TRX facing, right? You can see from here, I have already uh, put down, you know, the view, how it looks like from each angle. So you can rest assured over here, you get the 360 degree view of the whole KL right at your doorstep. Okay, so that would to answer what is the unique selling point. All right. So basically, we have all these kind of facilities. I think it's a very interesting project. Normally, if you get these kind of facilities, you don't get you know such a low dense product. Yep. All right, and especially in the middle of the city. Yep. All right. So now here comes to the fourth question all right which um a lot of my friends has been whatsapp me, uh, is actually whatsapp me now and they're actually asking that what is the layout like what's the smallest like what's the biggest layout i mean so so in your opinion all right because we haven't you know going into details yet so maybe perhaps harris you can show us like uh, a few layouts and what is the best layout for investment in honesty yeah so for those who are still watching now I can tell you in this coming 10 minutes, it's going to be very, very exciting, very uh, consume your brain, but it's a good thing because it means that you are now going into the main part, right? It, which is which layout is the most suitable for you. Okay, so for this session, right, I also have prepared a simple analysis. And again, right, this is a personal opinion for no, uh, for information sharing. And it doesn't mean that right it's you know it has to be a buy decision or sell decision nah. okay but again let me just further add on on that which is on before i talk about the layout so actually in atrium for all units it will come with this smart home feature which again right this i will i would say is one of the main selling point because how many condo nowadays where you can use your phone nah, right without waking up you can turn on the lights turn off the aircon these are the things that you know it has transformed and for this particular building right it all already comes fitted with this function so imagine that right you are paying like below market value but you are getting function that is way at once than most property launched nowadays right i'm sure there's some come with smart home feature right but this one is already come within the unit and what i like beside that is that in each unit right it also comes with uh wardrobe furnishing lightings and plaster which most buildings normally they don't right so it means that you actually don't need to hack anything or any wall right and other than that you also are getting quite extensive list of uh furnishing like kitchen cabinet hook and hop so these are are the things i want to mention before i touch on the layout because when it comes to decision on investment or own stay right i believe furnishing will add on more value to your rental which then will decide your future tenants so over here, I can assure you all these are suitable for which type of customers. Number one, the tourists, which they come in, they just want everything to be taken care of. Second type is the business traveler, where they don't have time to go out to wash their clothes. They have their dryer washer over here. Okay. Right. And also, of course, you have the, you know, all the lightings being installed. So actually, you can also target to those family 
to one like brand new condition. Okay, so again, right, to talk on the layout, which I'm going to elaborate more here. Okay, I want to first show you what is the current package. Of course, the package in details, how much discount and all those, you have to press in the WhatsApp link, right? Because we are not, uh, all these are basically, uh, you know, subject to availability. But to give you an idea, like what are the price you can estimate, okay? And don't be surprised, the lowest price is actually 592000 right? I, I can guarantee you can't see this price in Jalan Ampang, especially in the embassy role. So for this layout, it's actually type A, okay, which is the one plus one. And then you can go all the way to 1002, right? So that one is a two plus one, which comes with uh, two buff. But what I'm trying to elaborate here is that this project is under HOC. So until December this month, you can still entitle for all free legal fee waiver, including the MOT for the first million. So basically, I can say you actually doesn't need to come out much money, right? So yeah, for those who are, want to know more, you can always press the WhatsApp link. Lah. Okay, but to to make it simple for you guys, right? I have come up with these three simple analysis. All right, so I have break it down to three types of layout: one plus one, two plus one, as well as the bigger unit. Right. So for the one plus one, I believe if you are looking for uh to target right short term, maybe they are single business traveler. I think this layout is the best. Right. So for those who are looking for maybe are looking for Airbnb investment, perhaps you might consider here because it already comes with smart home feature with partial furniture and all. You just have to buy the furniture. Only. And for those who are looking for something more suitable for Wednesday, actually I would suggest you can look at type C onwards, which is the two plus one. So for the two plus one, right, what I can uh, foresee is that it will be suitable for family and young expatriates, right? Young, young expatriate means that they are just starting their family and maybe they will have their children to come over, right? And so for that, right, I think this size is the most optimal. And because each bedroom can be able to fit in a queen size bed, you can also have one small bedroom to be spare, as workroom or guest room. So these are what we call the minimum requirement if today you want to target those young expatriates, right? And last but not least, if you are looking for the biggest unit, I think your target market are really people who are either looking I would say 80 to 90 percent are looking for own stay who are looking for downsize right so this is suitable for those who are you know maybe they are used to stay in around like jalan ampang areas where they are generally bigger houses like thousand two thousand three thousand square feet and now they just want to downsize i think this project will be perfect for them and because you are taking the bigger unit you can also get the corner view with two views that would means better sunlight and ventilation Okay, to go into details, right, which are my best, uh, I would say my most um, recommended units, I would suggest type C and C1 uh, because I think these two units has the most optimal size for investment as well as people who don't mind to actually stay in a two plus one. Okay, to give you more idea how does the unit looks like, this is the sample I have pulled pull out, right? So for the one plus one, you have two types generally, A and B. So you can see from the floor plan, right, the difference between A and B is that A is facing to south, which they, their design are more square. And you also have certain units facing west and north, which you can see you have slightly more curve on the window. It's not curved, but it's like a ang angle, right? There's an angle to it. So the building of the unit will look like white. You will go white as you walk in deeper inside the unit. So the living room and the master bedroom is wider. Okay, and if you were to compare the pricing, right, actually it's not much different, right? So I would say the decision here is really the view. Lah. Whether do you, will you, uh, will you mind paying more for the view? Because like I said, right, facing south here, you know, you are facing to the existing buildings. So most likely the view will be the tree surrounding, lah, which I also like lah, because it's more quieter. Okay, or you can go for the, you know, the, the 64 square feet, which is the bigger unit with a better view. In terms of installment, actually not much different. It's about 100 ringgit. Okay. So I think here, the major difference in terms of the layout will be the study area. Because what I see here is that the study area for type B, although you have a study area, but because the angle is not square, so the, the rooms, I would say to put a single bed, maybe it will be slightly harder unless you don't put in a table. But for type A, the, because the study area is square, you can fit in the... Um, a small bed without issue yeah so this is something you, you you need to take note 
right? And to compare the one plus one, right? So one plus uh, two, or two plus one, you have the type C and D. Again, why there is two types of the similar layout is because also of the angle, right? So type D you can see because it's located at the, I would say the, the curve. That's why this layout, you have this slightly wide, wider uh, living and room. But if you ask me, the difference between these two is actually about 100 square feet. But what I want to mention is that the price, okay? And here you can see a major difference already. Where type C, you are paying 2009, type D is close to 3002. So it's already almost 200 ringgit different, right? So to me, for the same layout, which one will I choose? I myself will go for type C. And the only reason is because not only is cheaper, but you can see the kitchen space itself, right? For type D, uh, you have this pillar in the middle. So it means the kitchen will be cut into two half. But for type C, you have the full length of the kitchen. Okay. And last but not least, to come to the biggest unit, this is what I call the uh, you know, the most sought after unit lah, because it's a corner unit, thousand two square feet, two plus one. So out of these three, okay, because there is uh E E2 and E3 I didn't show because that is actually one unit only on the lowest floor. So I just want to show you generally these three units. So these three units, right? What is the main difference here? Of course, you can see the, the square feet is only like um, six, six to seven square feet difference between all three. In terms of price, the cheaper one is actually type E4. And if you ask me why the cheapest one is E4, it's because not only the size, but also the view, right? E4 is like the balcony itself, okay? It's actually facing to south. So the balcony here is most likely blocked, right? So if you want to get unblocked view, I would actually suggest you can either go for E or E5. But if you compare E and E5 in terms of the price, actually E is cheaper, yeah? So actually, if you ask me, right, the only difference between all three is that, of course, the kitchen-wise for E4, you have the square kitchen, right? But for the others, you have the pillar lah, at the kitchen, which I don't think is a very big factor, lah, right? So another difference is the rooms where you can see E5, the rooms are more square, and E4 and E, the rooms are more less square, lah, right? But if you ask me if these two are not a big factor, normally I will go for type E lah, because of the you know, the price and the view. Yeah, so this is my recommendation okay, for this uh, unit. All right, well, that, that is an intensive one. So <laughs> yeah. basically, yeah. you only have 200 over units and you have so many different layers up until type E. And yes. there's still E1, E2, E3. All right, so I hope uh, it answers your questions. All right, yeah. now, there's one question from... Ali, basically, it's not a question. He's actually asking, when is the showroom going to be ready? Or oh, I think this Ali is quite yes. keen on this. Yes, the showroom is already ready for the uh, the the one plus one. So if you want to come, press in the link. We will make an appointment for it like, because we need to register. Yeah. All right. But also, Ali, alternatively, you can also drop message into our page and we'll have people to attend your message shortly. All right. So now lastly all right i think this is what most investors are actually uh interesting about all right so what is actually the roi for this project you know because as investor normally all right i, I would say ROI is the far most important thing all right in property investment so harris what's the roi like like yes what's our okay what, what can we the, i think for those who have stayed tuned to the end of the video right this is the best part, lah, right? So I think for here, a lot of people are concerned you are buying like in KL, right? And you know, KL price is very high. And so what, what are the futures here and what is the appreciation here? I actually do a simple analysis. And again, this is just based on what we uh, research, right? It's for a sharing purpose, lah, okay? And to answer that, right? Okay, give me a minute. So let me go back to my slide here. So we always get this question, it's like, what is the ROI here? What, what, what are the expected returns we are expecting to get, right? So I'm going to give you a simple analysis here 
which again, now this is based on the market history data and also what is the current data. So what we can see here is that actually I have break down KL into main three parts, okay, which is TRX, KLCC, and also our project. So why these three is because it's within the three kilometers areas. And these are the three hotspots. And if you survey the market currently, if you are looking for freehold KL, KL projects huh, within this area, within these three areas, these are the current average pricing, right? And if you know TRX, of course, is the financial hub, right? So it's no surprise they are selling like 2,000 per square feet. And also you have KLCC, okay? Which is, again, if you look at the recent launches, 1,006, I would say is a very uh, normal pricing. And of, of course you have the atrium, right? So it's about 1,000 per square feet. So if you ask me, like, what is the expected return? I can give you a simple analysis here, which again is based on uh, what is happening in the market. Lah. So normally when we talk about investment, we normally would target minimum 30% return over the course of five years. Because I think if you buy a property, you should expect a return more than 5%, right? If not, you will have put in the savings or other investment, right? So if you talk about KL, let's suppose we jump into a time machine and go forward to five years okay this is something of i would say the price that you should be targeting at in order to make that return and you can see that the trend here is that it's moving to 2006 to 3000 per square feet right with some you can see like condos in four seasons buy and tree you know certain units are, are actually selling at this sort of pricing and even in klcc 2000 per square feet right you have the eight con lay all these are actually selling way higher so if you ask me, is this happening? Yes, it is, right? But for Atrium, right? What you can notice, even with a 30% increase, right? At 1,003 per square feet, comparatively to current price in KLCC, right? You are still buying almost, uh, I will say almost 30% to 40% lower. So if you ask me, at the end, it all falls back, right? To the basic numbers. If given two locations, Similarly, it's about three kilometers away. One which is in the middle of city center and another one is under a low density environment with very high security with nearby amenities and also very nicely partial furnished with a nice design selling to you at 30 to 40% below what is selling in the KL. What do you think, right? I think this is a very important question. So if you ask me to target 30% gain over here, it's quite achievable. In fact, I would say it can be overachieved, uh, right? And to 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 answer another question, which is the rental, right? Because I'm sure that a lot of people now are buying KL properties for the long term, right? Definitely today you buy Atrium, a freehold title, KL area, I don't think you want to sell immediately, right? Definitely you want to hold it. In fact, some maybe will pass on to their next generation, right? I think this is the beauty. So if you look around Jalan Ampang, or Jalan Ampang Hile, most of the condos here are actually selling above 2 million. And if you're lucky, you still can get like maybe about 1 million. And that's also an old condo called Lanson Place. But other than that, right, you are looking at 2 million or more. So imagine you are buying in such an area where most of the property are transacting 2 million above. Plus, talking about rental, right, you can see that most of the condos here, their layout are generally very big. 1,008, 1,009 square feet. So what does that mean? It means that the rental here are very high. Not because the, you know, just the rental, but because of the size. Okay, so you can see that generally you're talking about this sort of price range. Right. So let's say, given the same layout, 2 plus 1, right? Okay. At the average rental of 6,000 to 7,005 area, with our layout of 2 plus 1, which is smaller unit, we are estimating 4,000. And if you ask me, is this number achievable? I would say it's a very conservative number because it's the same layout, smaller, but we are offering 40 to 50% discount, right? Compared to surrounding with a new unit, right? So comparing to the price and installment, let's say for 35 years, it's about 2009. You can still get a passive, almost 1,000 just from the rental alone. So to answer those who are looking for investment, what do you think? 2009 ringgit, freehold, 240 unit, limited edition unit in Jalan Ampang, 
located at the middle of Jalan Ampang with landmark like Victoria Station right next to you. Okay, I think 5.5% 5, 5, 5 you is definitely achievable over here. So if you are looking for something with a high you, proven area, reputable developer, low per square feet, with high appreciation, right? I think this project you should put in your shortlist. Lah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Okay. So I think that's pretty interesting because nowadays project, I don't think, you know, even 4% is like, you know, very hard to yes. achieve nowadays, right? Okay. Mm. Now let me check. All right. So basically there's one question mm. from the audience um, mistake. Hmm. All right. So she's actually asking, uh, I believe that she has actually started the, you know, started watching this live very early on. So she actually asked that since it is a repurposed building, how sure we are on the security and the structure itself? Okay. So basically she actually, you know, her concern is actually about the security and also yep. the safety. So, you know, I think what, to answer thing? that is all for back to again, the planning of the building, because like what I mean, they have no intention to add on more floors, right? So they want to maintain the, the solid building structure as now. So as what they say, if it's good, why change, right? This is the mindset behind it. Lah. So rest assured, you don't have to worry about that. But what you can anticipate is a brand new house with a brand new furnish. And most importantly, with the, I would say the most interesting facility and the nicest facility as well. <laughs> okay. Mm. okay. So I hope Mr. Harris, uh, I hope Harris does answer your questions. All right. So let me check. All right. Is there any other more questions from the floor? Okay. So basically there's, um, um, I think this is actually my question. All right. My question to Harris, because, uh, I think along these days, there are a lot of new projects coming up. I mean, if you talk mm. about uh, investment, uh, so specifically mm. Jala Ampang, you know, mm. Uh, I'm not sure whether it is exactly located in Jalan Ampang because nowadays, you know, project, you know, if it's nearby, then they will call them KLCC or whatsoever. All right. Mm. So, um, in your knowledge, do you know how many of the projects are actually happening around, you know, the atrium and, and are they really your competitors? Like, okay. Like, you know, mm. Okay. To answer that, I think uh, the competition is mainly coming in from uh, further out, which is near to Jalan Ampang. Lah. So actually, if you ask me, if, as an investor today, are you should you be worried of competition? My answer is yes. But can we avoid competition? My answer is no. So what we can do is basically to filter out our tenants using the, I would say choosing the right property. Lah. Because if you choose the right property, your tenants definitely will pay more just to get that sort of either status or facility. That's why it's very important for us to analyze what sort of target market. And I saw one of the questions from Ali Jai about what is the expected rental if I were to choose a unit facing KLU, right? The two plus one. So my answer to you is that if you choose that unit and if you were to go for a thousand two square feet that, that layout, I would say easily, right? You are consider holding on a very limited unit because if you go back, all right, I just want to share this because I think it's very important for us to know how do we study if this layout is suitable or not. I will always go back to where the available or the supply in the building. So you can see that if you look at two plus one, right, the total supply here, okay, is around um, 50 units, right, plus minus 50 units, right. So actually, if you ask me 50 units split into four different views, each unit is come with about 10 units. Let's say assuming half of it is for own stay, you only have five competitors within the building. So to answer that, I think the rental price, if you want to go in for this layout, is mainly because of the supply. And for that reason, I believe the rental will be higher than even what you see in 4,000. And based on what we understand in the market currently, I have one unit in Jalan Tu Razak, fully furnished, two bedrooms, about 1,000 square feet, it's going for 6,000 ringgit. So you do the math, if today 
similar location, right? Same size, but you are two plus one, plus you are furnished, freehold. I think to achieve six thousand is is capable, lah, right? So I, that is the number I would put that, and because the lim the supply is very little here, that also gives you more advantage in terms of selling, right? There's only about about five to six unit, so it's very very limited, yeah. Okay, so I hope it answers that. So, Harris, have you yourself bought a unit yet? Uh, not yet. <laughs> but not yet. But, yeah, because I have already committed a few. But I just want to share my last part before I end this session. It's basically my summary for those who are still 50-50 or don't know whether should, should you get or not. So these are my highlight or what I would say the reason why you should consider this project. All right. First of all, I think most importantly is the entry price. You are buying at the lowest entry price. Okay. So you can rest assured that you don't have to worry lah. Okay, that you are buying way over the market. Secondly, it's because of the title, right? So the title itself is what actually what attract most of the long-term buyers because if you have plans to pass down to your second generation, I think you should go for this, right? Freehold title in KLCC won't go wrong. Plus low density living is suitable for aspect market. So if you're looking for high rental yield, these are the places where it's really for the keeping, not flipping. And because of the hotspot, as well as the easy access, I think with the current package, with the promotion of HOC, and also what the developer is giving, is really worth the money. So this is what I would suggest for those who still can't decide. Hopefully you guys can make your decision easier. And thanks for having me today. That's it for me tonight. All right. So guys, uh, we have actually dropped down the WhatsApp link you know, in the comment below. So feel free to press in if you need any further information. Alternatively, you can also drop a message to our page. Lah. All right, and we have uh, people to attend you shortly. All right, so I hope this session has been fruitful and like, you know, as what we have always seen, Harry is actually a very detailed person. All right, he's actually given like, you know, so many values in terms of uh, return on investment, location, what is happening in the surrounding, you know, uh, uh, which part of the city center, which is really uh, the density of it, like which part of it is a really high density, low density, and what are you actually getting out of this project? All right. I think it's a very detailed explanation. I think uh, perfect. All right. So Harris, I think uh, thanks for your time. All right. Now, of those of you guys who has any questions, all right, we'll, I think we'll stay on the floor for another one minute. Are you okay with that, Harris? Yep, no problem. Yep. I think we'll stay here for another minute and meanwhile uh feel free to drop down a question and also i think um for those of you who are actually interested in viewing the showroom you can actually press the whatsapp link and we'll have um, people to attend you and then we can actually arrange the viewing time because i believe that um, the showroom is actually ready like what harris has said right so yeah another 30 seconds and we'll actually go off all right so um i hope you know uh you guys actually learned something over here if not you actually have uh the project knowledge regarding atrium because i believe this is a project that you don't get to see in youtube yet all right i haven't checked it myself but i think, I think that, by the time you yeah. see it it's already fully sold <laughs> yeah. yeah in fact now Harris, uh how many of it is unsold right now i think left about 15 units to 20 left units, 15 units. Really when is this like officially launched two months ago about two, two months, months ago. ago wow so you can see people are actually quite crazy about yep. this area yep. very fast all right <laughs> yes all right so do arrange your viewing timing all right uh with the uh by pressing the whatsapp link all right so i think that's it for today thank you all right so thank you um, um all of you guys who actually stay until the end of the um, you know, the presentation. And also, thank you, Harris, for being here. Bye-bye. All right. Good night. Bye-bye.